Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Weather Center, everybody, and the happiest of Fridays to you all. This is the first Friday of June. It is June 6th, 2025. Welcome back to your latest tropical update. And I will tell you right now, before we even get started, there really ain't much to talk about. Not going to waste your time. So if you really don't want to listen to some of the science and the information that I'm currently investigating in terms of where it is we could see our first potential named storm, it's still in the same general source region. But to tell you the truth, our models just they aren't quite having it just yet. Still going to continue to investigate and monitor day to day. I'm waking up at three, four in the morning to check the zero Z models, looking feverishly at the 12 Z models. And up to this point, Still not really seeing it. So regardless, thank you all so much for taking some time out of your Friday night to join me here in the Weather Center. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider clicking subscribe. I know we got a lot of questionable information flying around out there. Still, quote, things to watch and things popping up. I'm personally not seeing it. So if you want those timely, accurate, and reliable tropical weather outlooks, you've come to the right place. Please kindly consider hitting that subscribe button, giving that like button a little nudge, and share this information for folks who you think would benefit from it and feel free to drop me a comment down below in the comment section say hello it's always great to chat with you all or if you have any questions comments or concerns i will get back to you at my earliest convenience with that being said though let's go ahead and get started so the eastern pacific is still hogging all the action this is kind of what one of my main concerns were for the atlantic side of the spectrum if the eastern pacific remains active we aren't really going to get a whole lot out of our Caribbean, out of the Gulf. And so far, that has been holding true. You can see here we have two red AOIs. We have our disturbance number one, the further to the east feature there, with a 70% chance it organizes into our next named storm over the next seven days, and a 60% shot within the next two. An area of disorganized showers and storms is expected to manifest into an area of low pressure just to the south of the Tawanapec Gulf, one of our favorite words we used to use in Air Force weather. And from there, it looks like we could get a short-lived tropical depression. Now, the reason they're probably using the terminology short-lived is if you look at the two red AOIs here in their formation regions out ahead of the red Xs, they're going to be in very close proximity to one another. As we all know, tropical cyclones, they can do a little dance sometimes, you know, a la the Fujiwara. We've talked about that in the past, but they don't like being so close together. They're kind of introverts, if you will. They like their own personal space. They out of their bubble and they don't want to be rubbing elbows with everybody in the crowd so that's why disturbance number two here which actually, as a matter of fact, you know what? Per this latest update, let me get my face out of the way. We actually have Invest 91E, a low pressure system. So it does look like it has since consolidated and has now been designated our next area of investigation. With an 80% shot, this becomes Barbara over the next seven days. Now, I'm going to go ahead and derail my briefing very quickly. Let's go ahead and pull up the tidbits here and see if we've got any information on 90E. Oh, and it's 92 e hold up hold the phone we got two invest out there 92 e and 91 e 92 is disturbance number one you can see some of the model data down in through here generally off towards the west northwest very short lived intensity models are not giving it a fighting chance and this is the gefs which is normally a little more aggressive in terms of intensity and then we'll come back over here we'll take a look at 91 e which is designated by national hurricane center still a fairly broad area of showers and storms but there is a bit of a circulation right in through there just needed to kind of tighten up pull together and we'll probably be off to the races in terms of forming our next named system now you can see here the model does give it a bit more confidence you can see some of the members there in the shades of yellow oranges and one red member there indicating this could become a solid tropical storm but both of these are going to be very short-lived so you know in my opinion even though the eastern pacific's doing its thing right now we're not going to have very quality tropical systems out there alvin as we know got fairly organized towards the last few hours of its life cycle before being ripped apart by the southwesterly shear all that moisture was slingshot into the desert southwest never to be seen again and i do think that's going to be the same signal or the same song and dance with these two features once they do start to develop especially 92e 92e is the further east system disturbance number one highlighted by national hurricane center and then obviously, it goes without saying for the Atlantic side, 
No tropical cyclone activity expected in the next seven days, and it could quite possibly be the next 10 to 14 days. Let me take a look. Or let's go ahead and move over to our satellite. So we have our couple areas out there. First disturbance here is starting to really begin to show signs of that counterclockwise spin. And then our second disturbance, both of them very close to one another, but you can see those broad spins. They're very slow. We do have low pressure centers beginning to form with both, which is likely why over on the tidbits, we have the two invest areas now. Both of them, because they are literally neck and neck with one another, they're probably not going to be able to really intensify in dramatic fashion, which is good news. It does look like 90 92E further to the east, just to the south of El Salvador and the southern coast of Mexico, could bring some additional thunderstorms and maybe some elevated winds to the coastline there, the shores of southern Mexico, before it continues off towards the west northwest, trying to intensify. The rest of the Atlantic, though, and I'll take you full screen to really emphasize that. If you look, our basin, we've got some waves down in the ITCZ. Our African easterly wave train is moving. You can see not one, but what looks to be two in the far right-hand corner of your screen trying to come off the coastline now. But other than that, we're very quiet. Even the Central American gyre has more or less been bullied into the Eastern Pacific because of just how strong the trade winds are. We also have a lot of dust out there. If you look closely, especially towards the Bay of Campeche and up through the Yucatan Channel, Cuba, portions of Florida, this is going to be our natural color visible satellite shot. And you can see just how the water is bathed with those brown shades. That is the Saharan air layer in full effect over us. You come over here and you can see, especially off the west coast of Africa, into to the MDR, which is likely why our ITCZ has calmed down a little bit. We have a fresh plume coming off. Our NASA GOES model is not anticipating this is going to make it as far to the west as the first one, so we'll have to wait and see if we do start to get more of that tropical moisture and thunderstorm activity firing over Central America into portions of the Caribbean, Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, even Haiti, Dominican Republic, that will likely keep some of the sand and the dust in that Saharan air layer fairly mild, fairly tame. I don't think we get as much here, especially along the Gulf Coast states, down into next weekend. Now, this is why we just can't see anything even trying to flare up. We don't have anything in terms of a distinct feature to even follow, let alone a signal of where to look. Everything is just dry out there, not only from the Saharan dust, but if you look, we have a very, very dominant Atlantic high. These are your 850 to 500 millibar winds, or I should say 850 to 700. I apologize for that. I was looking at 850 to 500 before starting the video. Look at how powerful that anti-cyclone is over the central and northern Atlantic. Atlantic. It is really causing a lot of ruckus and enhancing our easterly trade winds through the tropics. And then we have that Bermuda extension of it just off the southeast corner of Florida, hugging the western, northwestern Bahamas, helping to increase our easterly wind flow right into the Yucatan Peninsula. And that's precisely why everything out there, any little vorticity lobe that tries to do something over the waters just immediately gets punched right into the eastern Pacific. Now, I am noticing, even though the MJO is preparing, we have another day or so before it really starts starts to move into its most amplified phase out of the eight into one and then eventually two and then three as it begins to transition through the Atlantic and then back over Africa towards the Indian Ocean. This is a look at our zero Z Euro control model. Don't have the 12 Z in just yet on tropical tidbits, but I wanted to pull this up. This is our sheer anomaly. And if you look through the Caribbean, the MDR, we stay fairly unfavorable at least until just after the MJO comes out of its favorable phase. And you notice right in through here now and through the tropical Atlantic, by about the 15th and the 16th of June is when we finally see things begin to slowly relax. Now, of course, this is looking way out in time, so this could rebound and bounce back. I'm already seeing something else that I'll brief you on here in a moment that's bouncing back. We're seeing huge fluctuations, which is very erroneous if you ask me. It's very tough to dial in a long-range forecast when things are really, it's like a Geiger counter needer, a seismometer just going up and down in a massive earthquake. That's how much windshield wiping we have going on. You come over to your 850 wind anomaly, and basically what this is showing is how strong our easterly trades or how long our western or how strong our westerly winds are through the Atlantic, through the Caribbean, across the US, everything in the picture here. I'll take myself off the screen for just a second. And if you notice, our easterly winds are rocking 
right off the coast of Africa through the Cabo Verde Islands, the Lesser Antilles, and right up into the Yucatan Peninsula. And then notice, again, it isn't until we get beyond the 17th and the 18th when we start to see the North Atlantic Oscillation relax a little bit and our winds calm down, especially over the Atlantic. Note the difference there. Go back to the beginning of the run. We've got some strong easterly trades through the Atlantic MDR off the coast of Africa up to the Antilles. But then you go to about that 15th to the 18th time frame, we back off to a bit more of a neutral pattern out there. So honestly, it's the winds. It, the Saharan dust is there, but I would argue that it's just such a really intense area of high pressure out there that's increasing our sinking motions. It's increasing the subsidence, as it's called. That's why, if you notice, regardless of whether the sal was there or not, the Atlantic has just been dead. There hasn't been much out there in terms of activity. Here's a look at our Pacific North American oscillation. This is something we've been monitoring to see how much more of that extension of the western side of the high pressure in the Atlantic is going to remain in place. And if you tuned in on Wednesday or even on Monday, I'll move the page over ever so slightly so you can see this model just can't quite get a grasp on things. I'll go back maybe three or four model runs just to a couple days ago and note the difference. One, two, three, and four. We went from rebounding out of this strong negative phase, ridging over the east, troughing out of the west with an extension kind of marrying with that Atlantic subtropical high, the Bermuda Azores high. We go to today's model iteration, and we are back holding steady and digging ourselves in. The model is digging its heels in. And if you notice beyond the 15th through the rest of the month almost, we're now in a very dominant and aggressive negative PNA pattern, which would suggest our ridging ain't going anywhere. So... Two things. Number one, this could possibly keep us silent through the month of June. We may not get any named storms because of just how strong the wind flow will be out there. This will likely keep our dust flowing routinely through the Atlantic into the Caribbean, which is good news. It'll prolong the season. We won't get any destructive systems out there just yet. But at the same time, I wonder what this does with our water temperatures. I wonder if this sets us up for a very active peak of the hurricane season. We could be very quiet through June, portions of July, and then will this set the stage for August, September, and October? Because right now, the Atlantic MDR is coming up. We're getting rid of those cool anomalies. They're slowly but surely starting to trend away. On top of that, I'm noticing the euro, at least according to our latest run at 12Z this afternoon, we're getting a little more progressive now with our MJO. Notice as early as the 10th now. If you all recall, if you've been following along with me for the last couple of tropical updates, it wasn't until Friday the 13th and shortly thereafter into about the 15th, the 16th of the following week after Friday the 13th weekend, we start to see the MJO crossing from the East Pack into our basin. But now as early as the 10th, we're starting to see those rising anomalies beginning to manifest over the MDR. Still some of those features and some of that rising motion hugging the East Pack, getting out of the Caribbean, but now we're seeing it progress much quicker according to the euro and then by the 15th we're coming out of that favorable phase so i'm wondering if because we have such an excited and fast moving mjo if it's nailed down the timing of it will we start to move that favorable window to closer to when alberto formed last year will we have a last ditch effort by the atlantic by about the 15th to the 20th will we move to the very tail end of my original date and time and we start to see those rising motions begin to come down some because if you look at the map here we still have the greens we are still in a favorable setup to produce lift, increase our moisture, and this is whereabouts the shear does back down. So perhaps one of our other tossed around theories about the MJO just being too robust, too much of an upward uppercut punch, if you will, in the atmosphere, maybe it's shortly after that things will try to percolate a little bit. So we'll have to wait and see. And that's all we have for today. Like I said, I'm not going to show you the models. I'm not really going to show you too much. And I know, forgive me if that seems a little lazy on my part, but I'm not going to butter it up or ham it up if there really isn't much to talk about. We see what's happening in the eastern Pacific. Thankfully, those storms will likely not take on anything menacing. They likely won't become hurricanes. They may be mid-grade tropical storms, just like we saw with Alvin, and maybe even a little less than that because they're right up against one another. The Atlantic right now, nothing is cooking. We don't have any pronounced signals. Our ensembles are quiet. There really isn't much to monitor right now, so I'm simply just investigating, looking at the big picture setup, which is exactly what I walked you through today and I want to thank you for sticking around if you watch to the end of the video because a lot of it was simply just 
verbal brainstorming and having a conversation with you all. So I do sincerely appreciate that. Once again, if you happen to find the channel, you're brand spanking new, checking out the video for the first time, please consider clicking subscribe. I will keep it real, authentic, transparent, and 100 with all of you tuning in, especially as we go through the meat and the breadth of the hurricane season. I'm really looking forward to seeing what's in store to bring you all the coverage you deserve and the information that you need in a timely manner. Please give that like button a little nudge. Comment down below if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or you just want to tell me where you're tuning in from and say hello. I'm always happy to have a conversation with everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you had a great week. I hope you're taking advantage of the weekend. Wherever it is you're tuning in from, have a wonderful Friday, folks, and we will talk to you again very soon. But until then, this is Weather Center Nazario signing out.